So I've added some functionality to PLS GUI and I wanted to show you some of the new feature features. Um, let's say you're just starting up. You, you, here's your desktop and you've installed all of the files in one folder and so and you're using our console you're just using the R console you're not using our studio even though it will run off of our studio so I'm going to start up 64-bit version of 3.01 which is not the most current R the first thing you would do is you would use the set working directory command in conjunction with a choose directory command like this and and what happens when you do this if you spell it right is that this choose directory function inside of set working directory will open up an interactive dialog box let me show you in Windows there it is and so you just drill down to the folder where you where you have all of the files so we do that and um, let's see I've got them way down here somewhere it's under uh, PLS sim files and then it's under workspace and it's under the UZ directory so all I have to do is identify the folder where all the files are that's all and say okay and then you have to load you have to source in the main program you say source parentheses, quote mark, run pls.r. Note uppercase and lowercase is important. So it's run and lowercase, pls uppercase, dot, and the r doesn't matter. But you have to have the r, but it doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. So it's reading in the file right now. It's reading in, and you see all this, that means it worked. If you look at the header of that file, run pls.r you'll see it's loading these packages listed there's a number of packages listed you must have all of them installed or it won't work you'll get an error you also must have installed the Glade libraries and I'll show you where they are uh, the RGTK2 package the GUI package that this program's built in this application runs on Glade it runs on GTK library GTK libraries that are accessible here. So let me show you. It's uh, gladewin32.sourceforge.net. And let me open up a browser here and show you where the file is. So I put that URL into, into uh, Internet Explorer and w we go there. It's this one. You will need, if you're running Windows, and that's the only platform that I know this works on so far. I haven't tested it on Unix or on uh, uh, Linux or on Macs yet. Uh, it will work on those eventually. Is this one. You need to download and install these libraries in addition to the R packages listed at the beginning of Run PLS. Okay. So once you've done that, we go back to the console. We've sourced in the main file. Now all we have to do is start it. And to do that, you just say run PLS, again, uppercase, lowercase is important, with the parentheses, but nothing inside of them, and you hit it. Okay, so here's the application. Here's PLS GUI. And um, let me resize it to make it fit the screen. I, I still am, a, am of the opinion that menus are overrated. I like to make it just as simple as possible. Note now, though, that we have 10 buttons in the toolbar, 10 different functionalities. When you push any one of these buttons, it will give you a dialog box telling you what you have to do next. Um, it, is, it is difficult to, to misuse it or to make it crash. Um, it can happen. It's beta software, of course. But even though you can hit these buttons in any order, it's a good idea. In fact, it's a very good idea. It's necessary to set the directories first. And you only have to do this once. If you, uh, the next time you open up the application, if you haven't changed its position, its location on your computer, 
it will it will recognize all of these directories it will, it will know where they are so you only have to do this one time and it's a bit tedious um, but when you push these buttons you'll get a a, a browser window and you can drill down to the folder and you have to do all four of these okay the main directory you just tell it where the application files are this files directory is where you get special data files uh, your model and measurement structural files and your data go in this it's separate from reports okay so you you, you want to make that different just make a folder called files somewhere and point to it then reports is for all of the outputted formatted reports that come out of the app quite a few and graphics is for the the plots okay so you set those four and again you only do it once and uh, we're not going to walk through these I really want to show you our commander let's do that right away okay so our commander opens up a world of opportunity here and let, let me show you what I mean okay so we have started up the application we have set our directories for the main directory the files the reports and the graphics and let's let's go with our commander so I hit our commander and note tells me I have to load data I set the directories but I didn't load data so it tells me it's, pre it's pretty hard to mess up okay so I need to load a data file oops I didn't load a model file so I need to do that okay so I'm gonna go look for an SPLSM file although you can enter other sorts of files Okay, so now I hit our commander again, and it's thinking for just a second. It opens up our commander, it's in the background, but for our commander to work, it needs the output from PLS, path modeling. So it, it tells me I need to run that first. Okay, so we're going to run PLS, just the PLS path modeling algorithm. I will run the bootstrap. I'll do it 200 times. I will save the reports to disk. This is a nice feature. It automatically saves all the reports so you don't have to copy and paste or save them individually. And then I say, OK. And we have this little progress bar that spins. That's for the bootstrapping. It's, it's rerunning the program 200 times. And then note that this notebook is populated with all of the reports out of PLS and out of the, the bootstrapping for you to examine. But you can also access these reports here. If I hit the PLS results button, um, uh, you have 11 reports that are created, five are from the bootstrap. You, you can see any one of them interactively a little window will pop open okay so you you have all of these reports available to you either on demand through the PLS results button or in the notebook this this structure this object is called a notebook and every tab which are closable by hitting the X has one of the reports okay but that's not what we're here for um, we want to play around with PL, our commander 